podcast. My name's Kate and I'm coming to you from South Devon in the UK. Um, this is my knitting and sewing and crafting podcast um, and this is episode number 31. forgot what else I wanted to tell you there. Um, it's the second episode coming from our new home in Devon. Um, and we have had a beautiful morning this morning. We've had a beautiful few days of hot sunshine. It's been so glorious. Um, it's been like midsummer. Um, it's currently May. It's the beginning of May. So um, we're well into spring now. And yeah, we've been enjoying some beautiful weather. It's gone a little bit cooler this afternoon and it's clouded over. I'm looking that way because that's where the window is so I can see into my garden. Sometimes I get distracted because there's a, a lot of people, we live in a terrace cottage, a cottage in a row of terrace cottages, houses. <laughs> um, and there's a little lane behind me which leads to the shop. Um, and there's a lot of activity, a lot more than what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> going on out there so sometimes people walk past and I look out the window and I think they can hear me but I don't actually think they can um, I imagine they can hear me but I don't think they can so I think we're okay because that probably sounds a bit weird um, they might think that I'm talking to myself <laughs> um, anyway the birds are singing and Charlie and I Charlie's my dog in case you don't know Charlie and I have been out in the backyard this morning. Um, we've got a little enclosed backyard just out there, just below my sewing window. Um, and it gets a lovely amount of sunshine about sort of in the middle part of the day. And then it's shady for the afternoon, which is perfect for the new project that I've been working on out in the garden. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I... I've been doing some little Instagram stories. A I've got a tutorial to share with you about that actually because that's how I've learned how to do these stories now. Um, I've finally learned how to do stories where you can put several clips for taken from throughout the day all together in one little story. So I finally got around to doing that. It was just a case of looking up a really good tutorial on the internet and I did so I will I will just link that below in the down bar. Um, if anybody out there is a little bit baffled by Instagram stories and not quite sure how to do them, but if you want to have a go, this is a really good guide to um, having a go at the Instagram stories. It's pretty extensive and it's step by step, but it's really easy to follow. So um, I'll put a link below. It's by um, 9 to 5 Mac. I've got some notes here to help me remember. And it's titled How to Use Instagram Stories Step-by-Step -step Guide. So have a little look at that if you want to know how to do Instagram stories. Anyway, what was I saying? The story that I've been sort of, well, what I've been posting lately in the last few days is um, the progress of my mini pond. I'm very excited about it and it reached its completion this morning, if that's, if that's the right phrase to use. Um, basically, I got a very large ceramic planter and um, I plugged the hole in the bottom, which would be the drainage hole for the plants. This is a knitting podcast, by the way, just in case you've only just joined the podcast and you're new to it. Um, but I do tend to ramble about a few things that aren't knitting related before I get into the knitting. Sorry, you can always skip ahead if you're not interested. Um, I'll just tell you this little bit about the mini pond, though. So I, I went to the garden centre, the aquatic centre, and I got this stuff that is sealant, um, pond liner kind of repair sealant stuff. Um, and I used an old tile and I, I squidged a great big bead of this sealant stuff onto the tile and then just laid it over the hole, the drainage hole inside the ceramic pot. And I left it overnight. And the next day I filled some water into the pot 
and watched and watched and watched and left that overnight and thankfully and happily it proved to be watertight so I filled the whole, th I put it into its proper position um, and then I filled it up with water and left that overnight and no leaks so I happily went along to the garden centre and bought myself um, a little mini water pump, water feature kit thing for £20 bargain and some water plants um, and me and Charlie, I say me and Charlie, I, it was me really because Charlie's a dog and she's got paws and she can't do things like install water pumps and uh, you know place pond plants and things but she definitely kept me company and supervised the whole process. Um, so yeah, we've been setting that up this morning, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I planted a fern just at the back of it as well, just to sort of hang over the front of the pond. So hopefully I shall be adding some plants to around around the mini pond as um, time goes on. Possibly a couple of fish, but I really need to research that first. I definitely need to let the plants establish and the water establish and let a little mini ecosystem create itself before I even think about putting any fish in there but if and when I do put fish in I'll definitely be getting a water testing kit first um, because in the past I have had problems with that with goldfish and the quality of the water so I'll be doing a bit of research I might just keep it as a, a little wildlife pond don't know anyway I put um, I put a plug onto the water feature, uh, it comes without a plug. I managed to do that this morning with Avion Supervision and plugged it in and it's going and it looks really beautiful. I'm so, so pleased with it. So I've got this lovely um, trickle of water, a little fountain of water with some lovely plants um, right in the little sunny cut corner of the garden. It's only sunny for a part of the day so it won't, hopefully it won't get too sort of green and algae, hopefully it will stay nice and clear. I'll keep you posted on the progress. I might put a bit of footage in here. Have a little sip of tea. Okay, so I really hope that I've got the camera actually trained on me. Um, it seems to me like it's a little bit high, but I did do a little test shot first. I'm pretty sure I am in the shot, so... Fingers crossed that I am. I'm not, not just talking to the wall. Should we get into a little bit of knitting? Oh, before we do, I totally forgot to say in the last podcast episode, um, following the announcement of my pregnancy, which was ages ago now, um, because I am now 31 weeks pregnant, um, but I, what I meant to say in the previous episode, in episode 30, was a big thank you to everybody who had left really lovely messages um, on the previous to that episode um, where I announced that I was pregnant. I just wanted to say thank you for all of your well wishes and uh, messages of congratulations and um, it was just, it was lovely to read all of that and everybody's happiness and enthusiasm for, um, for me and Avion having our first baby. So before I forget, just wanted to say, I forgot to say that, <laughs> so big thank you to everybody for that. Um, is there anything else I want to mention before I go on? There was a tutorial that I forgot to link to in the past, in the last episode, but I've written it down here and I'll talk about that a little bit further on because it's to do with the sock that I'm going to show you, the sock pattern. Um, I'll start with a finished object, I think. I've got a little bit of a mixture to show you today. I've got some knitting, some sewing, um, a bit of jewellery craft, textile -y jewellery craft, and um, a bit of screen printing, which you may have seen on my Instagram stories, again, if you follow me. And um, there are some new things in the Etsy shop, so I will just quickly show you those at the end if you're interested, and if you're not, that's okay, because all of the other stuff will have been done, and you can just click off at that point if you want to. So. Um, oh, and a bit of crochet to show you as well. <sighs> okay, take a deep breath, right, because as 
um, Lara, who's also pregnant um, of the Fawn and the Fox, the Fawn Knits podcast. Um, she's a few weeks ahead of me. She just said in her last episode that she hoped she didn't get too out of breath while podcasting because everything is squashed at the moment and I'm quoting her and that's exactly how I feel too. So, um, especially if I talk about knitting because I feel excited when I'm talking about knitting and that makes me a little bit breathless too, so I'll probably have to take quite a lot of deep breaths. Anybody want to see the bump? I'll stand up and hopefully you'll get the bump in the shot. Um, so here's my latest, I'm not sure if you can see it, I'll stand on my tiptoes. <laughs> Um, that's how big the bump is now. <sighs> so, yeah, it's, uh, the bump is coming on nicely. <laughs> um, like I say, I'm 31 weeks now, so I keep forgetting how many weeks it is that you are pregnant for. Um, th there's not long to go, so we need to get stuff. We need to get stuff bought. Anyway, I won't go into that now. I'm going to start with showing you some knitting. And uh, my first thing that I want to show you is a finished object. It's a baby knit. Um, I, so I showed you, I don't know, I was about halfway through it last time in the previous episode. I love this. It's probably like the last baby knit I said was the cutest thing I'd ever knit. But I now think that this is the cutest thing that I've ever knit in the whole wide world. I just think it's gorgeous. So this is the pattern. I show, I'll just quickly show you it because I did show you it in the last episode. Um, but I will, I won't put it here because I did it in the last episode, hopefully you can see that. It's the newborn onesie, and I've forgotten the name of the lady who did the pattern. It's not on the front of the pattern for some reason. Pop back to the last episode if you want to know because I put it on the screen there. And here is my finished newborn onesie. If I hold it back. I really am not, I'm not sure if I'm getting it all in, so I'll just move it around a little bit. Um, so that's the front and this is the back. It's so, so soft. And again, there are more details about this in terms of the yarn, um, etc. in episode 30, where I show the yarn and the ball band and all of that. But it's drops alpaca silk and it's, oh, it's so, so soft. Um, and so anyway, it's finished and I've got the buttons on. I'll try to give you a close-up. They're just little plastic buttons from a local fabric shop. And they're a sort of lavender grey sort of colour. Um, I just think they look so beautiful. I'm really, 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 really happy with this. Um, I'm thinking, by the look of it, it might be suitable for when the baby is a couple of months old. I don't know, baby experts out there. I suppose that all depends on how big my baby is <laughs> when he or she is born. Um, so it's got all these buttons down the side. The whole thing opens out um, fully, as you can see. And there are some buttons at the bottom as well for nappy changing. Uh, and what else do I need to say about this? I just really, really, really enjoyed making it and I think I want to make another one. Um, if I make another one, I might cast on um, with some... Uh, mind you, I've knit the newborn size, so I don't suppose it would come out any smaller, would it? Unless I used slightly finer yarn and a slightly smaller needle, I'm not sure. Um, but it would be lovely to think I could make one to fit the baby as soon as the baby's born. I have got some cotton yarn. Um, and this is alpaca and silk, as I've just said. Um, so actually, when the baby's a couple of months old, hang on, was it now May? I oh, know it's not. It's not June now. It's, it's due in end of June, um, early July, August, September. So by September, if I'm right with my thinking here, um, when it starts to become autumny, that might be perfect with it being alpaca. Um, <sighs> It's not completely perfect in terms of my knitting skills. There are a couple of things I've done, uh, little tiny mistakes that you may or may not notice. Um, if I didn't point them out, I will point them out because I've already, well, I've started talking about them now. But if you look here, a couple of cables are a little bit 
longer than they should be. Basically I just went a couple of extra rows by accident without putting the cable in. It sort of bothers me but by the time I'd noticed that it was happening there was no way that I was going to uh, unpick the work because as you can see there's such a lot of detail. Um, if I just open out the side for you you can see that there's garter, there's cables, there's eyelets, um, there's all sorts going on so <laughs> I just didn't feel as if it was a big enough thing to want to sort of justify unpicking several rows of eyelets and cables and all sorts of different stitches so um, I'll live with it, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I didn't quite get the the buttons at the bottom totally central but I really don't think that you would notice unless it was pointed out and it doesn't bother me. And is there anything else that I did? I did something silly with the stitch count. I think I might have gone a little bit far and um, at some point messed up the stitch count slightly. Um, so I think this is a slight hybrid of sizes. It's possibly a little wider than it should be. But again, that doesn't really bother me because at the end of the day, it's got to go around a baby nappy as well. So um, at some point, I'm sure it will fit nicely. <laughs> and it's stretchy anyway, so. I'm just totally in love with it. I absolutely love it. And I think pretty sure I'm going to knit another one so I might try and find some um, cotton yarn to knit one so that the baby can wear that um, in the summer as soon as the baby's born or shortly after. I'm really pleased with that. I don't think there's anything else I need to say about it. Oh except that I kept the sleeve short you may have noticed. Um, the pattern displays the onesie with long sleeves um, but I've decided to keep them short because I imagine that I will probably have um, so soft a little cotton baby grow under it, especially if it's the autumn or the winter. Um, so I've just kept the sleeve short. For that also, it just felt like having long woolen sleeves, but then no nothing on the legs didn't seem to quite fit so I thought it should all be short if you know what I mean in my head that's what seemed logical so and I think it looks really sweet um, oh, so that's my finished object I'm really pleased with it that can go in the baby drawer now um, what should I show you next I'll show you my sock project next because I'm really happy with that um, got it in my bento bag, my little bento bag. I haven't yet um, got round to making these for the shop but I think I really want to. Um, I think I might combine that with the screen printing that I'm going to show you a little bit further on in the episode so um, watch this space. There'll be a bit of possible bit of experimenting going on in the sewing room over the next couple of weeks hopefully. So I'm going to show you I've got one finished sock and I'm halfway through the other, so in the last episode I showed you pretty much exactly this. Uh, oh, hang on, I've pinned the yarn to the sock there. I pretty much showed you, um, I, was, I was around about this stage anyway, I think, if I remember correctly, but this is the second sock, so this is not the sock we've seen. Um, I've got my, this green line of stitches here is um, a line of waste yarn, which is basically separating, how do I even say this? It's the afterthought heel placement. Um, so it's waist yarn which once I've knit the length of the foot and, and the toe, once I've completed it, basically I'm doing a tube, tube sock, then you take out this waist yarn and you put the stitches either side of the waist yarn back onto the needle, needles, um, and then you knit your afterthought heel. What I think I forgot to do, I know I mentioned that I'd got a, um, instructions from a, a fabulous tutorial by Andrea Mowry, and I've got it on my notes so I can remember to tell you. Um, if you want to know how to place that waist yarn in your tube sock in preparation for doing an afterthought heel, there's a fabulous tutorial on YouTube by Andrea Mowry, and it's called the Afterthought Heel Placement. I will put a link below. Um, and then 
by the time I got round to doing this second sock, I couldn't find that because I hadn't saved it in my tutorials thing in YouTube. And um, I was feeling a bit impatient because I just wanted to get on with the afterthought heel. Um, oh, by the way, thank you to everybody who responded to my request for suggestions and links to um, to that as to how to carry on with the afterthought heel. Um, that was really helpful. I got a couple of really good links in the comments below. So thank you so much if you took the time to do that. And I looked at, I followed the links. Um, there's some really lovely um, tutorials actually um, to have a look at. So. If you're interested to know, just pop back to the last episode and look through the comments. There's a couple of really good links there about afterthought heels. Um, but the one that I ended up using to actually knit the afterthought heel, um, I stumbled across it and I didn't even realise until afterwards who it was. <laughs> um, but I found the most amazing tutorial that takes you through the whole of the process for knitting a sock from the very beginning um, and she gives you instructions in the one tutorial, she gives you the step-by-step -step instructions um, and it's all time stamped as well so you can have a look through to see which bits are relevant or you can just follow it from the beginning all the way through. Um, she covers using DPNs and using this, what is this magic loop, um, whichever your preference is, this tutorial is perfect for you. Um, and it's a tutorial by the New Leaf podcast, um, who I've been watching, binge watching lately. Um, I'm really enjoying watching her podcast. And her name is Carmen, and she is Dutch, I believe. Um, but obviously, she podcasts in English. Um, and her tutorial on YouTube is called, reading off my notes here, How to Knit an Afterthought Heel. I will link it below. So. Again, the Andrea Maori Afterthought Heel Placement, superb tutorial, and then the New Leaf podcast if you want the whole shebang, if you want to just basically know how to knit a sock. Um, it, she basically gives you a recipe and the tutorial is filmed so clearly and so easily to follow, it's just brilliant if that even makes sense. Um, so that's the New Leaf podcast's tutorial on how to knit an afterthought heel, I'll link those below. So once again, thank you to everyone who gave me some tips. Um, and some people just simply sent a few suggestions to me on Instagram. Um, all extremely helpful. Everything was, um, it contributed to me being able to knit this afterthought heel because I didn't have a clue where to start. So that's the second sock. Knitting it on my high hires. I love these. And the pattern that I'm following is... I'm repeating myself on the previous episode really, but I'll just very quickly say The Prairie Sock by Kay. Oh, what's Kay's last name? I can never remember it. Of the Bakery Bears podcast. You all know her. I've, this is exactly what happened in the last episode. It'll be like a deja vu if you're binge watching. Um, but the only difference is I'm not doing the heel flap and gusset that is in the pattern. As I said, I'm doing the afterthought heel. Here is my finished sock. Ta-da! I wasn't going to show you it until I'd done both of them, but I feel really proud of it. <laughs> and I had this fear, uh, as I was setting up to record the podcast, that I didn't have very much to show you. And as usual, I've realised I've actually got quite a lot to show you, and probably could have kept this for the next episode. But I'm just going to show you it now, because I've done it now. <laughs> um, so, here is my finished Whoops, let me just get it. I don't have sock blockers. I might have to invest in some just for the purpose of displaying a finished sock. And I've just noticed that I need to close up that hole. Can you see that little hole? I think everybody gets this little problem here. The hole just there. Um, I can just go in through the back and just stitch that up a little bit. Okay, so this was so easy to do. Once you know how to do it, Basically, as somebody pointed out to me, it's pretty much the same as knitting the toe in terms of how you do the decreases. Um, so you just pick up your stitches, I'm sure everybody knows this already, but you pick up your stitches again from where the waist yarn was. Um, with your contrasting yarn, if that's what you're using, and, um, and then you knit a, a, maybe knit one row, I think no more than two. And then you start doing decreases as if you're doing a toe and you end up with a heel. And 
got to say this fits really really well I'm really really pleased with it and I really enjoyed the process of knitting the afterthought heel probably more I don't dislike knitting a heel flap and gusset but I just really enjoyed doing this and I think what I really enjoyed was being able to just knit the tube initially and not have to think about the heel halfway through um, but one of the things that I like the best about this is um, for me the heel is the first thing that will probably wear through on my socks and so I will be able to go back um, at some point in the future once this starts to wear through and simply take out the heel and re-knit the heel um, without having to undo the whole of the sock or cut into the sock or anything like that so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to try the afterthought heel as well makes them more repairable but I'm really pleased I did because I think the fit is amazing it's brilliant so I'm really pleased with that so the next time you see them I probably will just flash them at you because you've had enough information about these already and you've seen them twice but there we go that's a sock and a half I'd say and the yarn I showed you it in the last episode but quickly it's by Wollenwein um, and I can't remember any, any of the other details about it but it's a Wollenwein yarn and it's beautiful there's a close-up for you just in case you haven't seen the previous episode that may be too close I'm not sure Oh, that's the Wollenwein yarn. This yarn is um, wool barn, sock tweed. Tweed sock. Whichever way around it goes. Ready for a clang. Oh no, I thought the needles were going to clang on the table, but they didn't. I just take a deep breath. And a sip of drink. So, shall I do all the knitting in one go? Because I've got one more knitty thing to show you. I think. Do you know what? I've just realised I've got two crochet things to show you as well. Um, I've got one more nitty thing to show you, so I'll show you that now and we'll make it all nice and neat. We'll do it in sort of sections today. So, for ages I've been wanting to cast on another cardigan. This, by the way, I'm wearing my featherweight. Um, I knit this ages ago. You've already seen it on the podcast if, you've, if you're not brand new to the podcast. I love it so much. Um, I wear it nearly every day and if I don't knit another cardigan soon I'm going to wear this out completely. Um, I've got to say it's wearing really well, it's Madeleine Tosh, uh, Merino light singles. Um, I'm really pleased with how this is wearing and you know even at the elbows um, and it gets stretched across like this and pinned just with a badge or with a, um, what's the thing called, the needle holder. I just, you know, I just stab it through the front of the cardigan all the time and you'd think it'd be wrecked by now but it's actually wearing really really well um so anyway but i am afraid that i'm going to wear it out if i don't knit myself another cardigan um i have got the grace cardigan that i knit i showed that a while ago um but i've kind of this is going to sound like i don't know if this is going to sound a bit shocking but i've kind of gone off it a bit not the grace cardigan i love the grace cardigan as in the design but mine I've gone off mine for some reason I've gone off the color of it um, it's a very vibrant it's beautiful but it's a very vibrant green and it's in 100% um, alpaca yarn for ply and it's very drapey and I think because the time when I was suffering from morning sickness really badly I was knitting on something green um, which I still haven't been able to pick up, but I am going to re revisit that and pick that up at some point in the future. Um, but I've associated that colour with feeling a bit poorly. And so I have worn my grace a little bit recently, but um, I'm not entirely at ease with it. Um, and there's a few other things that I'm not so happy with that I can't quite put my finger on, but I think it's a textural thing. Um, also, <laughs> Avion did have a little giggle at me, not in a horrible way, but in a funny way, and I laughed too, because, because of the bump, things look a lot shorter on me now, um, and I did knit it slightly cropped, um, but I wish I'd knit it longer in the first place now, and especially now that I've got the bump, it does look a bit ridiculous. Um, it's okay if I wear it open, but if I do the front button up, for example, just to, you know, for a little bit of extra warmth, looks ridiculous because it comes halfway down the bump <laughs> it just looks stupid so even if 
press record again. Even if I really still absolutely loved that cardigan, I wouldn't be able to wear it for, I don't know, the next couple, probably six weeks or something. How long am I going to be pregnant for now? Another six weeks? Something like that. Um, so, and that's the case with a lot of my clothes at the moment. Everything comes halfway up down the bump. So I've had to invest in a few maternity things um, to see me through. And But what I'm really lacking is lightweight cardigans. Now, having said that, the cardigan that I'm proposing to knit definitely is not going to be finished before the end of my pregnancy. I can't see that happening because I'm just not that fast at knitting and I've got so much other stuff that I like to work on at the same time. So it seems a bit of a silly thing to say, but it has inspired me to at least start a new cardigan. Um, if you are a long-term viewer, you may recall that I at one time started knitting a shawl I think it was by Andrea Mowry. I still love that shawl. I cannot remember. I think it's called Andrea's Shawl. It's not by Andrea Mowry. I don't know who it's by. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because I'm frogging it. Not because I don't love the shawl. I love the shawl. I want to re-knit that. I really enjoyed the process of knitting it. It's um, a lace border and then it's actually plain stocking stitch but I would want to add in a bit of detail. Anyway, I'm rambling about something I'm not even going to show you. Basically, I frogged that project because it came to a standstill. But I really want to use the yarn because I'm totally in love with the yarn. Um, so I looked in my Ravelry library to see what patterns I already have. Um, and I was going to knit the April She Will Come, I think it's called. And I still want to knit that, but that's, I've decided that's not the one I'm going to choose. Um, I was looking for a lightweight four-ply cardigan, basically, that I can put over um, dresses for the rest of the summer. I've got a creaky stool, by the way. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, anyway, so it was going to be that. I printed off the pattern for the April She Will Come. April Come She Will? And then decided not to do it. And then I thought, I know, I'll do another Grace. <laughs> um, because I think this yarn is really would look so beautiful knit up as a grace so I printed off I reprinted the grace pattern because I've made so many notes on my other one um, that I needed to start again with that one <sighs> printed off the grace pa pattern started swatching for it and um, very shortly went off the idea of doing another grace so soon um, I do want to knit another grace I just want to knit everything <laughs> um, but I thought I might just swatch and make my own cardigan up, um, which is a bit bonkers considering everything that's coming up in the next few weeks. Um, have I got the headspace to actually be creating my own cardigan pattern? <laughs> um, it, just for me. Um, but I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a go. I got quite carried away with the um, with the sampling and swatching. Um, basically, I'm going to use this yarn. You may remember it. It is, I've written it down so I can definitely remember, tell you the right thing. It's the Uncommon Thread um, and it's the BFL Singles and it's a four ply fingering weight and I love it so much. And I think the colourway is Attic Window, but I've lost the ball band a long, long time ago. I've got, I can't remember if I bought three skeins of this or two. I've definitely got two skeins worth um, and if my research going back onto the Loop Knitting website, if that's correct, then I think I've got 800 metres of it. But seeing as I'm making up the cardigan pattern anyway, that does, it doesn't really matter if I know or not how much I've got because I don't know how much I'll be using. <laughs> I'm aiming at a sort of on the hip length cardigan and I don't mind if I end up doing a three-quarter length length sleeve so we'll see or if I have to buy another skein of the yarn um, and risk the dye lot being different but we'll just see how it goes so I broke out my stitch dictionary my the ultimate stitch bible I love this book so much um, I started having a look through it and I found as you can see, I've post-it post noted um, a few of my favourite textures. 
um, I thought I want a lightweight cardigan, raglan sleeve, top down, um, with a, 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 a knit on button band, as in you won't pick it up afterwards. That's one of the things that I didn't like about my grace, I think. I don't like the button band on it for some reason, I thought I did. I loved it when I first knit it, I've gone off it, I don't know why. Anyway, so, and um, I'll probably try to incorporate pockets in the seam rather than patch pockets. Um, I definitely want pockets. Right, anyway, and I wanted texture, but nothing too heavy because it's supposed to be a lightweight cardigan for the summer. So, um, the swatch I'm just about to show you, and hopefully it will show up quite nicely on the camera, but we'll see, has got one, two, three, has got four, five, well six really, different stitch textures um, experimented on it. So here's the swatch. So I've started with a bit of stocking stitch at the bottom. If I hold it close, perhaps, I'm hoping it'll focus for you. And then there's a little knot pattern. Hang on, if I just put it onto the actual needle, it'll be easier to hold it flat for you to see. Gosh, I am a bit out of breath. That might be easier to show you. Okay, so I've started off with just plain stocking stitch to get a nice gauge. And obviously, um, there's the back of it. I'm knitting this flat. The cardigan that I want to knit will be knit. Oh, actually, no, because it'll be a cardigan, so it will be knit flat. I was going to say it'll be in the round, but it won't be flat because it's a cardigan. So that's good from the point of view of the sample and the gauge. Okay, so stocking stitch. And then um, this, this is called a, I think it was called a knot pattern. I can't exactly remember, but it's one of the texture stitches in my stitch Bible. And then I felt as if maybe it didn't stand out enough as a texture, so I tried a slightly different one, which is this one. Um, and then a few rows up, I thought, shall I incorporate a few eyelets and see what that looks like? So that's a kind of hybrid. Um, it's taken from the book, but it, I've added a bit in myself. I think maybe it's a bit too busy, but I'm not sure. And then I thought to myself, this, these textures were intended for the front of the cardigan. And I thought, well, I don't want to knit a plain sleeve. I want something to do on the sleeve as well. Um, and I would like a bit of texture there. So I'm trying out the, uh, I think it's called a bobble rib. Um, so I've done three repeats of that one. Um, I'm just experimenting with the spacing of the bobbles here as well. So the first two bobbles are further apart than the, than then I did the next one a little bit closer just to see. So I really hope you can see that. Um, and then up the side I've done a seed stitch um, as a button band, as a proposed button band. And I've just put, popped a couple of little eyelets buttonholes in there to see how big they come out. One has got one yarn over, one has got two yarn overs. So that's my design process so far. Um, I really love this yarn. I love working with it. It's got a crispness to it. Um, it's got a lovely drape. I think once it's um, steam blocked, but it's still got a real nice crispness to it, which I really, really love as a texture. It's um, a little bit rustic, but definitely wearable against the skin, definitely for me anyway. So that's as far as I've got. Um, I don't know whether to just stick with one texture or to incorporate several of these textures. I'm going to do a little bit more sampling. I think I'm happy with the fabric in terms of the needle size that I've used. And the needle size that I've used is a 3.5 millimeter. So that's a UK 3.5 millimeter. It says US4 on it for anybody who does US Earth US terms. And it's I'm using. Oh, I was going to say it's Chago, but it's not. It's my Addy Clicks. Um, I remember when I was knitting the Grace, pretty sure I knit that on my Addy Clicks and I think I was a little bit annoyed with the connecting bit here um, where it clicks in and out just from the point of view, oh, pulled off some stitches, just for, I'll just put them back on, just from the point of view of um, when you have to move your, I knew I was going to do that, when you have to move your work along, oh, Kate, sorry, distracted. Um, it's okay, I've rescued it. 
when you have to move your work along, once you've got a lot of work on your needles and you have to nudge it along the needles. I, do, I have found, and Molly said this from a homespun house in one of her recent episodes, um, she actually sent her addies back. I love my addies, I'm not sending them back, I really enjoy using them. Um, but I'll just have to see how I get on with that connecting bit here. Um, I've knit other projects on this. I've found that anything above a four ply weight is totally fine for me. It doesn't catch. I'm not a very tight knitter as well, so that's probably going to make a big difference. Um, so I'll just have to see how I go on the four ply. Um, it feels okay doing that actually. Like I say, because I'm not a very tight knitter, probably not going to be a problem for me. So I'll report back to you on that one if I remember. So that's my sample. I'm hoping to do a bit more sampling um, for the rest of the week and then hopefully I might do a few calculations, a little bit of measuring and start a cardigan. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think I'm t a little bit bonkers for making up a cardigan when I could just get one of the patterns out of my library and just follow the pattern. Um, but I feel I need it. I feel I need something really creative and a little bit technical to focus on um, as well over the next few weeks. I think that that will be a really enjoyable thing to do. Um, we'll just have to see how the yarn quantity goes. But I know they still sell it on, on, the, knit, on the loop yarn knitting. Loop yarn? Yeah. <laughs> I can't think. Website. So I can always get some more of it. Right, so that's that. I think that's all my knitting. Just looking at my desk, got loads of stuff in front of me. I'm going to show you a little bit of craft. It's textile related. It's a Molly Makes project. I probably should say at this point because I think for the last few episodes I've mentioned Molly Makes. Um, I've definitely, I don't work for Molly Makes. I have no endorsement or anything with them. Is that even how you say it? Um, I just love the, bag the magazine and I forgot to tell you um, that as a, a housewarming gift, as a moving gift, my lovely, 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 gorgeous, lovely sister um, sent me a subscription, a gift of a subscription of six issues. I don't think I said that anyway. If I didn't, I'm telling you now. Um, of six issues of Molly Make. So um, I've had two of those so far. So it's really exciting to get it through the letterbox. You might. Um, and so I think it was in the latest issue, but I can't remember. If anybody wants to know, drop me a line and I will root out my magazines and find which issue this is in. But it's either in the last one or the one before. I think it's in the last one. So it's a necklace. Um, this is the necklace. It's a, a project that's given in step-by-step -step instructions. Um, I hope the camera's focusing. If I do that, um, it might focus better. I'm not sure. Basically, this is a necklace. I'll give you a bit of a close-up. Oops. I should have put it on, really. But I think it'd be a bit too fiddly to put it on for you now. Um, perhaps just model it around my neck for you to see. I don't think I can put it on because I don't think I'll be able to get the clasp on. But basically, I'll just hold it in place. It would sit like this on your neck with the with a chain there. I, think that's, I don't even know how that looks on the screen. <laughs> um, I really, really, really enjoyed this project. I loved it so much. So it's made with piping, um, three strands of piping as you can see, and all of those are covered with um, fabric. So I've just got some fabrics left over from the bags that I've been making. Um, I thought the colours went really well together, quite springy, and then um, I've forgotten what these are called now. Oh, I've got the packet here. You get these, I got these off eBay. Oh, it doesn't say it on it. I'm going to say a word, and I don't even know if it's the right word, but I'll put it here. They're called Ku... <laughs> don't laugh at me if you know that I've got this wrong. Kumihimo, or something like that. Kumihimo um, end caps. So I got a packet of them off eBay, if you just Google that, if you're interested. Um, here's one. It's open at the bottom, so you basically get some, and I bought some fabric glue, um, and you could just glue 
once you've con once you've made your tubes, covered your piping and twisted them together, you basically just sort of stitch them together and then glue them into the end there, like that. I shouldn't really tell you this because it's in a magazine. Anyway, yeah, well, you don't really, yeah, anyway, you'd have to look in the magazine to see how to do it anyway. Um, and then um, I bought the chain and some jump rings, um, just got these findings off, I think eBay as well. Um, jewellery supplies on eBay. And I don't know if I've ever, ever told you this, but I actually used to be a silversmith. Um, I may have mentioned it before on the podcast. Um, but I used to make jewellery out of silver. And so I've still got all my equipment and I raided my jewellery box. Um, I didn't have any chain, I had to buy that. Because uh, I used to make my own chain, basically. Um, but I did have some findings. Um, and I was looking for a lobster clasp that I had already. But I found one that I made a long time ago. And I'm going to attempt to show you a close-up of it. So this is basically something I've made out of wire. It's in sterling silver, um, but it's just a little end clasp. Hopefully you can see that. So it's um, basically a piece of wire that's been soldered and flattened at the end and formed, and then it just works like a little shepherd's crook. So I was quite pleased I've been able to use my own little finding for that. I love that so much, it's such a pretty little project and it made me remember something I made a long time ago, I'm just going to reach over to get it because it's over there. Um, it's a bit tarnished now, it's made of sterling silver and it needs to go into my tumble polisher because I've got one of those polishers to polish up silver. But a long long time ago, years and years and years and years and years ago, uh, I had the idea of knitting with silver wire and I made this bracelet, so I just thought I'd show you it on the podcast, seeing as seeing as it's a combination of sort of jewellery, knitting, textiles type content today. Um, this is something that I made a long time ago, so it's just, I think probably, it looks like stocking stitch, but it's just, it's not very recognisable as stocking stitch when it's knit in wire. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but we'll just try try and show you it off there. Um, I put a little copper, it's a copper and a silver flower and I was intending to set um, a stone in the middle there but I never got round to it so maybe I will do that one day or maybe I'll remove the flower and do something else with it. Perhaps it'll make a nice little brooch actually and pop a little stone in there at some point and polish it up again because as I said it's really tarnished. Um, let's just see if I can get it on. I don't know if I can. Do, do your hands grow over time? Oh, yes, okay. It's on. So it's a bangle basically. It's just a closed bangle. As I remember, this was pretty tricky to knit because if you can imagine knitting with stiff wire, even though it's thin, I do think, I do remember getting achy and quite sore fingers um, doing it, but it was totally worth it because I really love how it worked out. But I think it would be nice to put that in the tumble polisher and give it a good clean and possibly finish it in some way by putting a stone in there. Um, and then I might start wearing it. Now that I've got it out, I just thought I'd share that with you because it's a past project. Um, just showing something that I used to do a long time ago, um, but still knitting. So it shows how all your skills can come together um, in different projects sometimes. Um, I think what I'll show you next is my crochet and then I'll go on to the screen printing. I'm a bit thirsty. My tea's gone cold but I'm going to drink it anyway. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, I'll just quickly show you. Actually, um, in the previous episode I showed you a bit of embroidery that I was doing. Again, another Molly Makes project. Um, I finished it. It was a little rabbit. I showed you it in the hoop, half done, and it's completely finished now. And it's going in the baby drawer because I think it's something that I'll probably hang um, above the cot, maybe as part of a mobile, or on the pram. Not sure yet, but here it is. Here's the little bunny, and it's by Kiri uh, Ah Kiri Key Press. I think is there's the back of that's her um, logo. But I think on Etsy, I think she's on Etsy, she, or oh, she's got a website and it's called Ki Kiriki Press. I'll put it here. And she sells kits, 
all different kits and she's got some really pretty ones. So that's the little bunny, I'm really pleased with it. It's really colourful and it really made me realise how much I enjoyed doing a bit of embroidery. So I would quite like to do a few more. Um, whether I buy some more of her kits or whether I just have a go at doing a couple of my own, um, I've got embroidery hoops and I might use some um, fingering weight yarns as the threads maybe um, to create a mobile or something. I'm not sure yet um, because I've got a lot of stuff to do over the next few weeks so I'm not sure whether I'll even get around to it but anyway it's something I think I'd like to think that I would do but anyway that is a really lovely if if you'd like to have a go at embroidery and don't really know where to start I would definitely recommend getting one of these little kits because it's small it's manageable it doesn't take long to do um, the instructions that I followed were the ones in the Molly Makes magazine because it was in conjunction with Molly Makes for this one. So, um, but if you buy the kit, I um, presume all the instructions for how to do each stitch are in the kits. Um, of course, there's always YouTube as well for tutorials. So, that was a lovely way to learn some new stitches. And I think my, I love doing French knots. These are the little French knots. That's one of my favourite things to do. But I think one of my new favourite stitches is, um, I've forgotten what it's called. I think it's open work is this basket stitch here. Um, I really enjoyed doing that. It was very satisfying. It's a series of long stitches with little ones um, where they where the long bits cross over. So that's my little bunny, or my baby's little bunny. That can go and live with the giraffe in the baby drawer. <sighs> okay, so deep breath. Um, crochet, right. Oh, I know what I've got to show you. Okay, in the last episode, I showed you a skein of yarn that I bought um, from by Madeline Tosh from Loop Knitting, I think it was, Loop, Loop London, whatever that's called. Anyway, um, it's a Madeline Tosh. Here it is caked up. And the colourway, it, it's Madeline Tosh, it's a lace weight. I've forgotten the exact name of the base. But it's the lace weight one. It's a singles. I do love it. Um, and I did crochet one square with it. There we go. I haven't blocked it though. That would have been handy because it's easier to show you blocked. So I crocheted one square with it. The intention was to crochet lots of squares with it in the same fashion as I have done this one, which I have showed a couple of times now on the podcast. Um, obviously that's in a different colourway, and then use those for the blanket. Um, but when you put them together, I know I said that I would probably join them with something really light, like just a basic cream, but I just still, I just feel as if it's too dark. I don't feel as if there are enough, especially considering it's spring and summer, um, I think I feel like I need the colours to be lighter, um, a little bit simpler. I feel as if it's a bit muddy. Um, I'm not saying I don't like it because I do. I don't dislike it. But I don't think I want this for my baby blanket now that I've crocheted a square of it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, that's going to hibernate for a little while. And I will consider whether I want to continue crocheting squares with that colourway or not. Um, it can just all stay in the project bag for a while. <sighs> if you want to see the rest of that project, I've showed it in the last couple of episodes, so I won't show you any more of that. I just wanted to let you know what was going on with that skein of yarn, because I was so excited when it arrived. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it happens, doesn't it? You get a skein of yarn, you do love it. And then you do the thing that you intended to do with it and it's not really how you imagined it. So that's what's happened there. So that's going to sit there for a little bit and just have a think. Um, but what it did make me do was think to myself, oh my gosh, I really need, I really want to be crocheting a blanket for my baby. I want to make a, blank, a baby blanket. Um, and so I started experimenting with some yarn that I'd already got, which is the alpaca silk, which is what I made the baby onesie in. Um, when I bought the yarn for that, I bought it in two colourways. Again, showed it on the previous episode of the podcast. 
Um, these are the two colourways, so you've seen that one already this morning um, in this episode, in the new ball onesie. That's all I've got left in, of two skeins, two balls of that, from that onesie project. Um, I've got two of these as well. So I decided to just do a little bit of simple crochet and experiment. Again, that's Drops Alpaca Silk. It's a four ply fingering weight. I've done the simplest thing and I've just made loads of these. And I really, really love it. Um, it's kind of, I describe it as, especially once it's surrounded by the cream, this, the middle colour is almost like a sort of brownie lavender. Um, I just think it's really beautiful, I think it's lovely. It's so soft as well and I'm keeping the squares small because of course they will be joined, I'll probably crochet join them so there will be a bit more of a gap, um, probably in cream but I haven't made a full decision. But I'm trying to keep things simple with this one because I think I went too complicated in terms of colourways with the other crochet idea project um, and it all ended up looking just too busy and too um, not very baby like to me so I'm really really going to resolve to keep this simple I may even just stitch um, the squares together if I want to keep the border in between the colours that width haven't decided yet but so far I'm really 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 happy with how that's going I'm being very good and I am weaving in all of my ends as I go the only one I've got left is the one at the top which will be crocheted in once um, I put the squares together because I know that I'll be really crossing myself if I don't do that so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got seven of those so far I did seven and then I thought I better stop because I need to to obviously not use up all my yarn, all my cream yarn, um, because I needed to finish the ones. So now I've finished the onesie, I can crochet away to my heart's content until that's finished, and then I shall be going back onto the Wool Warehouse website to purchase some more of that. I may, probably don't need to purchase any more of that colour, although having said that, I do want to make a cardigan in that colour. Might get another ball of it. But anyway, I'll be getting a little bit more of that yarn and there will be a baby blanket in that yarn. So that is something I'm really happy about. Um, got it in my bento bag. I'm using, just using a simple crochet hook. It is a size 2.5 um, and it's just a really simple granny square. Um, I don't even know what stitches are called in crochet. I think it might be some double crochets or it could be half trebles, I'm not sure. <laughs> I get confused because there's different terms for UK and for um, US as well. So it's just a simple gra um, crochet granny square anyway. In my bento bag, love it. With dog hair all over it, which you can probably see. Charlie's molting a lot at the moment um, because it's hot. She molts a lot anyway. And my, my bento bags have got these little um, snappy thing at the top to stop it coming open. Right, that's one crochet project. The other crochet project I've got is not a garment, it's not a baby make and it's nothing that I'm going to wear myself. Um, I'm using this giant ball of piping that I accidentally bought a long time ago, um, not fully understanding the measurements I, uh, in terms of how wide it was going to be. So when it arrived there was tons of it and it was really thick and it was not the thing that I thought I'd ordered. Um, but I kept it anyway because I always think these things can be useful, it wasn't too expensive. So that's just some piping, don't don't know what the millimetres width is because I've forgotten it was a long time ago when I ordered it. Like I say I got it wrong anyway. Uh, in combination with this which is, oh what is this yarn? Um, wait a minute, I'll just grab it so that I can tell you. Um, do a lot of noise while I find it. Here it is. It's Drops again. Okay, it's Drops Bell, Unicolour. Um, colour number 17. And it is 53% cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen. I've got quite a lot of this. I bought it so that I would be able to knit myself a top with it. I haven't done that and then I've just completely started. Oh, 
so we're on the third lot of uh, memory here on the camera so that's giving me an indication that I've probably been going for about 40 minutes now um, anyway so huge piping drops drops bell and I am using that with a crochet hook size four millimeter just a normal crochet hook to make a basket Ta -da! That's the bottom of it. I need to do something with that thing at the end there, but I think I know what I'm going to do with it in terms of hiding it in. So basically I've crocheted a big sort of snaily circle. I looked on uh, YouTube for this. Molly makes was the inspiration, <laughs> to say. Honestly, honestly I don't work, I work for Molly makes, I promise. Um, Anyway, I got the inspiration from there, but I looked up, I, I actually found the instructions not very easy to follow in the Molly Makes magazine, because there is a crochet basket in there. Um, so I just, I just used the idea, the inspiration, and I went on YouTube and looked up some tutorials for crocheting a basket. Um, if you go on YouTube and you just put in crochet basket, there are tons of tutorials. A lot of them are... Um, just straight crochet where you are just simply crocheting um, but the one that I wanted to do specifically was where you crochet around piping so you can find those on, on YouTube. Um, basically I watched quite a lot of different ones and then sort of knew what to do so I, there wasn't one particular tutorial that I've been following I just kind of got the hang of it by watching quite a few people doing a few different things so, um, so that's the base of it and I've started to turn up the sides, as you can see, hopefully you can see. Um, it's looking a bit wonky because it's been squashed in the bag. And I just get this out every so often in front of the telly and just do a few sort of rounds on it. Um, there's no deadline for this, it's not for a particular thing. I just felt that I wanted to have um, another little basket because I love having my stuff like this, if you can see that. I quite like having a quite a sort of just open sturdy basket to put to just drop projects in and it can sit on the sorry I nearly dropped my yarn then it can sit on the carpet beside the sofa and uh, it sort of acts as a yarn bowl as well so um, I'm intending to crochet up the sides I don't know maybe that much and by putting things too close I'm not sure and then incorporate handles some way so at some point once I get high enough I'll do something similar to that. <laughs> um, crochet around here and then create some sort of loopy handle on it that's incorporated into it. So I'm really pleased, I'm really enjoying that. Um, it took me a while to get the gist of how to hold the crochet hook. I'm holding it, in, holding it in a different way. Normally when I crochet, I hold it like a pencil, like that. But for this project, I'm holding it like that it's just easier because it's bigger, bigger crochet so I won't show you that again until it's finished I think um, oops got it a bit tangled but that's a nice sort of big chunky project you don't really have to think you just go round and round and round so that's a good one just to do a couple of rounds on here and there oh I'm dropping it all I'll just put it on the floor I'll tidy all that up later um, so that's a good project to do when you sort of you just need something mindless to do and of course I'll have a basket at the end of it so I'm really pleased so what have I got left to show you that's two, the two crochet things um, if you've seen my again if you see my Instagram stories you may have seen that I've been having a little go at screen printing this week and it was very exciting um, where's the book a while ago I showed you this screen printing at home so I got my book out off the shelf, I thought it was about time I did something. I have had a little go at lino cutting um, a while ago, but I really wanted to try out a bit of actual screen printing. And there's um, a project in here where you can basically make your own screen if you don't have a properly um, bought one, because they are quite expensive. Um, I may invest in one in the future, but at the moment um, I made my own. <laughs> So out of an embroidery hoop, this is all in the book, um, so I made my own screen out of an embroidery hoop. It's just a cheap plastic one. 
Um, this is proper screen printing mesh, but according to the book you can just use some fine muslin if you've got some fine muslin or I expect some neck curtain as long as it's really fine. But I got, I got some proper screen printing mesh. Um, you just buy it by the meter up from screen printing supplies on the internet, you can find it. Um, it's really strong, really fine. I think I would say to you, if you're going to have a go at this, it's worth investing in a little bit of this. As far as I can remember, it's not that expensive. Um, but I can't really remember exactly how much it was. I got quite a lot of it, so I can make a few screens if I want to. And then you can use a stencil method. So I um, ordered some paper doilies. Again, this is just a suggestion out of the book. So not taking any credit for design ideas here at all. Um, basically just literally following some of the suggestions from the book to try out the techniques and the inks etc and see how it works on the fabric that I've got. So homemade screen, place a doily on the front or whatever your stencil is you can just make this, I'm probably going to cut my own stencil up, maybe try the Lupin Bar logo and see how that comes out. Um, so you can just cut that out of paper. Um, so paper doily on there, masking tape all the way around, hold it down and mask out any areas that you don't want to print through. And then this is the ink that I used. I've got a black and a white, so this is obviously the white. It's a Speedball. It's by Speedball, that's the brand. And it's screen printing ink and it's, um, it's specifically for fabric, so I didn't have to incorporate any other medium in. Um, this will hopefully be washable um, but I will be experimenting with that later on in the week it's supposed to be so yeah, I trust it I think Speedball is a good uh, reputable company for inks so I've got a pot of black and a pot of white and I mixed a bit of that up to make a pale grey um, and I got some calico um, and some canvas. I did two different weights of fabric. And basically I just had a go at screen printing through. I've got my squeegee. I bought a squeegee from um, the same supplier that I got my screen printing mesh from. Sorry about the noise. I can't remember the name of the suppliers now, um, but if, there are loads of them out there. So if you Google screen printing supplies, you should be able to find places or even um, like hobby craft, um, craft websites and sell stuff like this and in kits as well. But that's my squeegee, you can get these in different sizes so um, luckily the squeegee, don't know if you can see that, fits quite well on the hoop. You don't want it too small but you obviously want it to be big enough to go inside your, your screen printing frame so basically I do that and I pivot it. I don't know if that's showing at all very well on the screen. <laughs> um, a little bit of mixing of paint, a little bit of squidging it through the mesh with the squeegee and this is what I got and I love it. So I showed it on my Instagram stories. I'm really pleased with it. I'll give you a close-up, see if that works. So you can see how the ink looks on the fabric. This is on a um, sort of medium weight canvas. Um, I wash the canvas first. I think that's important apparently for screen printing just to get rid of any um, anything from the process of the fabric production, um, like, I don't know what will be on there, but from the printing, if you're using a printed fabric or starch, anything like that. So wash your fabric first. Anyway, um, this isn't a tutorial, <laughs> it's just me telling you what I did. Um, yeah, I really love it. So it's basically just a doily printed onto some fabric. Um, I'm quite tempted, here's another one, it's identical, it's just on a lighter weight fabric. I'm really pleased. I did three in all. Um, I've got the idea that I've got one hanging up in the window there. I might put two together and make a little tote bag um, project style thing for myself just to see how it looks sewn up. Um, but I would like to have a go at making some of my own stencils or maybe doing a bit of cut and paste choppy choppy with the doilies to see if I can create some different sort of patterns. Um, maybe even Keep it as it is, because I really love that circular design and just put, incorporate something else of my own in the middle there, possibly, um, with a view to maybe screen printing onto some fabric and maybe making some bags with them. We don't know yet, because like I said before, we've got lots happening in the next few weeks and then lots happening after that as well. 
obviously. Um, so how much of that will get done I don't know but I'm pretty excited about the screen printing and it really didn't take up that much time or space. Um, I think in my head it's taken me so long to get around to having a go because I thought it was going to be a massive thing to try and get everything ready, get all the materials out. Um, yeah, but it, it, it wasn't. I think I did that in like an, an hour, all of that, including putting it all away again. So um, it's not that, what's the word? I don't know what the word is that I want to use, but um, it was simpler than I thought it was going to be to do it. So really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it if you think you might be interested in doing a bit of surface pattern onto some fabrics or paper, whatever. Um, it's a lot of fun, so I recommend having a go. So watch this space, there might be a little bit more screen printing happening in the Lupin Bar. Um, so, I think that is all my projects. Let me look around. Oh, got to show you this. I've got something from Etsy this last week to go on, it's on the kitchen shelf, because we've painted the kitchen, the dress is up, we've got a shelf up, my dad came, I think I said this in the last episode, possibly, that's going to be the theme of this episode, saying things that I said in the last episode. Um, anyway, the kitchen's looking really lovely now, we've painted it white, we've got a couple of shelves up, we've put the dresser on the wall and I've chalk painted it, may put an image in here for you to see. Um, because of course it used to be the background to the podcast but it's no longer the background to the podcast. Um, it's in the kitchen with all my pretty things on it so I purchased, I treated myself to something beautiful to put on it and I found this on Etsy and it's the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world and I love it and it's got really pretty forget-me-nots in it but this is a ceramic, now what's its name? I got it off Etsy um, I saw the maker in a uh, magazine and it's by Katie Robbins Ceramics, so that's her name on Etsy, I'll put it here, um, and I hope you can see it, I'm faffing around because I'm not quite sure how to show you it, but it's just so beautiful in its simplicity, um, I would like to have a whole row of them. Um, they, are, they do come in different colours, um, she's got some other nice little pots and things as well in her Etsy shop, so I was, I was absolutely blown away with that, I just loved it. I Instagrammed that too, and it's got some beautiful get me nots, which is everybody's favourite flower it seems. So I've got it here just to show you, but it actually lives downstairs in the kitchen, on my shelf of beautiful things, which I may be showing you now as I'm speaking, or I may have already showed you a picture of it, I'm not sure. Um, I think, ooh, shop stuff. That's everything that I've been working on, except for the shop stuff. So I'll just show you that now quickly. Um, I had a shop update. Thank you to everybody who visited the shop. Um, it was lovely to see some returning customers. I can't remember if I said that in the last episode. Um, and it spurred me on to make some more bags. I got some lovely new fabrics, which I can't remember if I showed you before. But I'm going to show you what is currently in the shop as we speak, or as I speak. Oh, just on that subject. So I'm going to show you these now, and I'm going to say they're in the shop now. Um, what I didn't know last time I recorded a podcast episode was how slow my broadband is here. Um, previously in Wales, before we moved to Devon, I could record, edit and upload the whole thing within 24 hours and get it out onto YouTube for probably the next morning. Um, it would upload overnight onto YouTube and then I'd click publish in the morning. I thought that was going to happen this time, but um, the previous episode took two days to upload. <laughs> um, so nobody was allowed near the Mac because I was afraid that we would press a button and stop it and I'd have to start the whole thing again. Um, Basically, I don't know why, but it took two whole days to upload, so it must just be something to do with the broadband here, I'm not sure. So, it could be that what I'm telling you now, and today is Wednesday the 9th of May, I think, um, you might not be seeing this until a few days later, it all depends. It could be quicker this time, not sure. 
I'm going to anticipate that it's going to take another couple of days to upload, which seems bonkers. Um, but it might do. So anyway, hopefully this will still be in the shop when I'm by the time you see it, because it'd be nice if you want to go and have a look if they still are there. <laughs> anyway, I've got this one in the shop. It's my little roundy pleated. And if you're not interested in shop stuff, thank you very much for watching and you feel free to click off or skip ahead. Um, I don't think there'll be anything except for me rambling at the end. So <laughs> um, here's the lining for this one. So it's a beautiful moon and stars. Totally fallen in love with this fabric. It's by Dashwood, I think. Dashwood Studios. And this one's a Tilda. So that's just one of those in the shop because the other ones have gone. Whoops. And the rest are drawstrings, so I'll just quickly flash them at you. They're all lined. I've got another one with clouds. Whoops. Back, back to front. Um, this is all Dashwood fabric, except the lining. That's just a little white dot cotton which is really pretty so there's that one what I'm going to show you now is a combination of Dashwood Studios and Lewis and Irene fabrics mainly and then a couple of really just really nice cottons off eBay so okay that one's Lewis and Irene I'm totally in love with that I kind of think I want to make myself a nappy bag carrier thingy pram bag with that fabric um, another moon and stars with yellow loving the mustard absolutely love the mustard Another moon and stars, and another one. They're all different. Um, that's got a different lining colour to that. So each one's a little bit unique in that they've all got a slightly different combination of colours. There's another one of the... Um, it looks like Morning Glory to me, actually, the flower on there. I hope you're seeing this, because I don't know how this is showing up on the screen. Always say that. And another cloud one. Um, I did make some cloud ones in the roundy pleat style, which is that, but they've all sold, so um, there might be some more coming, we'll see. And there's that one left as well, of the deer. And, so that's the bags. Oops, if you're after a notions pouch, there are some notions pouches still available. Okay, so I've just popped these ones in. Um, I'll just very quickly, there's a couple of Moon and Stars ones, they've all got different zips. Um, what are they lined with? They've all got some sort of nice lining with them. The pictures are all on Etsy with the linings as well. Um, what's that one lined with? Is that blue as well? Oh, that's got yellow in it. So, yep. Various combinations. So those are the zip pouches. Sorry for whizzing through. Um, snap pouches, some of these sold, I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm loving using my snap pouch, um, so I've made a few of those. They've all, I think they've all got the white lining because it makes it easy to see what's in it. Um, or a pale, some sort of pale lining. It's two moon and stars ones. And one of those left. <laughs> and I've got four more to make up. This is them inside out. Um, two of them are the moon and stars ones, so I won't show you that. And this is showing you it inside out, which is not very good for me, is it? But it's the cloud one. <laughs> so that's not that. That's the lining. Um, I just need to turn it the right way around and hand stitch these side bits, which is how I finish them off. Um, so that's four more that will be going in the shop: two cloud ones and two moon and star ones with blue linings, all ready for the shop. There you go. You can see the interior or you might not, depending on how blurry and rubbish showing that was. <laughs> so that's the shop update. Um, feel free to go and have a look. It's Luke and Bar Shop on Etsy. I'll put it here. I'll link it below. I usually remember to link it below, so you can go directly to the Etsy shop if you fancy having a look. Um, <sighs> okay, I think that's enough. I need to get a drink because I'm really thirsty now, and it's nearly time to put tea on. Um, I'm hoping that Avion is not going to be too late today. He is working very long days at the moment. Um, he leaves the house at six in the morning. He comes home for lunch, usually, which is lovely, and then in theory, he really ought to be home by six at the latest, but um, the last week or so, a little bit more than a week, he's been home after seven, 
because there's just so much to do. It's silage time, the grass is going crazy so they've got to um, try to manage cutting it and getting silage out of it uh, around the weather and around all the other stuff that they've got to do. Um, rearing calves and feeding them and looking after the older cows and all of that. <sighs> I'm just grateful he doesn't have to milk anymore, he just literally looks after livestock now and grass so he really enjoys that. Especially in weather like this and he's really tanned. Um, he, get, he just looks at the sun and he gets really tanned so <laughs> um, I think he's enjoying this weather. So I don't know what to say. Oh yes and then so it's Wednesday today on Friday we are me, Avion, Charlie and Bump obviously who is awake. Bump is awake and moving and wriggling as we speak. Um, we are going to visit Avion's family and our friends in Wales. Um, it's our first trip back up there since we moved to Devon. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's quite a long drive. It's five and a half, six hours. Um, Charlie's got a special dog hammock thingy in the back for the back seat um, so that she can be comfortable. She doesn't have to be kind of harnessed in, but she's safe. She won't fall forward or down. Um, it's kind of a, a, ha a hammock thing that straps onto the front seats and the back seat as well. So I'm um, confident that she's going to be okay with the journey. And yeah, so we're driving there on Monday and we'll be driving back on... No, not, no, sorry, we're driving there Friday. We'll be driving back on Monday. Um, so we'll have two full days really um, and three evenings with friends and family in Wales so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I've been coordinating things with Avion's family over texting and Instagram and by ringing a uh, phone as well and trying to make sure that we get a good family gathering together so that we can see as many people as possible for as long as possible so I think we're going to all have a big barbecue weather depending at Avion's cousin's house because it's a good sort of central spot um, for all the family which is going to be great and I'll see my sister as well which I can't wait um, see my sister and my niece and nephew so I'm really excited about that because she's in Wales too and some of our really good friends so that's going to be a really nice weekend next weekend um, so with that in mind I no, not with that in mind. I'm just going to say goodbye now because <laughs> I'm really thirsty and I need to get a drink. And I've showed you everything and I really want to get knitting on my sample again. I'm looking at it now. I just want to pick it up and knit and knit and knit on it. So um, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for all the comments. Um, I, I, de I read all of your comments. Um, I haven't been very good at replying to them. I don't know why that is because I do sit and read them. Technically I've probably got time to just write a quick reply, but it seems a bit overwhelming to think that I would do that for every comment. Um, not that I get tons and tons, I get a lovely amount of comments, but I think I'm rambling now. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know that if you do leave a comment below, I really appreciate it. I read it, it always makes me smile. I don't always get around to replying, unfortunately. Um, I usually read the comments while I'm running the bath or doing something else quickly and um, but I really appreciate your comments and I really enjoy reading them so please do feel free to leave a comment and please be assured that I do read it um, and, and enjoy reading it um, and sorry if I don't reply if you ask a question I do reply um, if you want to follow me on Instagram I'm quite interactive on there at the moment Instagram name here giving myself lots of editing to do there. Um, anyway, I'm going to say bye because it's taking ages to say goodbye as usual. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again in the next episode. I hope to get another episode out before the baby's born. I'm sure I will because there's quite a bit of time before all of that. And um, I wish you all a lovely week or a few weeks ahead, however long it is, till the next time I speak to you. Hopefully we'll all get some lovely sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and um, see you next time. Bye.